One, two, three. back down sorry i didn't time that first one right i was i was actually going to go back down but i was like oh wait i didn't teach him that yet <laughs> let's try it again i'm just going to go up okay one two three there are moments when playing solo piano where you come to a measure and it's just sitting there and you have absolutely no idea what to do what to play because the melody is a whole note or it's tied to a half note luckily for you in this video i'm going to show you my three method system that will allow you to create solo piano fills with ease my name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of jazzpianoschool.com. Don't forget to check out all the other amazing free education available. And if you're looking to take some next steps on your journey, we do have a membership courses and a live teaching program as well. With that being said, let's dive right in. All right, so here we go. I'm going to give you the three fill method strategy. Number one is going to be comping. Just adding some comps into any sort of tune when you have the opportunity to fill is going to be a great way to fill. And it's often underestimated. The sound it provides, it's amazing. So I have just friends pulled up. Once I hit this melody note, again, I'm not a horn player, right? And if I'm playing solo piano, I do have the responsibility to comp and create rhythm and things like that. So I don't need to hold this melody note down. I don't have to hold it down for six whole beats, right? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna drop my right hand down to my left hand and I'm going to comp like I was playing in a band. So that is a legitimate fill. It sounds fantastic. You're keeping up with the rhythm. It's super simple to use. Anyone can do this and it's not under any skill level. I mean, I'm a professional jazz pianist. I use this constantly all the time. And all I'm doing here is a rootless voicing. You can add in some more voicings. You can essentially make it anything you want. You can make it sharp 11, depending upon how advanced you are or how beginner you are. I mean, you could even just make this shells. So I could go one, two, three. I kind of switched to the F7 a little bit early, but it's completely up to you. You can do it that way as well. It doesn't really matter. So comping is a great way. And again, all I'm doing, I'm playing the melody. You can harmonize the melody however you want. That's not what this lesson is about. But I'm creating a nice big spread here. I'm taking my right hand. I'm dropping it down to my, the bottom here. Comp, comp. And any sort of rhythm here works. I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. I could do more if I wanted. I could go one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and. Right, so I'm just comping in the low end. It's the perfect way to create it a fill. And by the way, anytime you get to a moment like this, this is just friends, I think I mentioned that, you want to ask yourself, which one of the three strategies am I going to use, right? Am I going to use comping? Am I going to use reharm or passing chords? Or am I going to use improv? Those are the three I'm going to be talking about today. So you can comp however you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. If you know more comping methods, if you've checked out my uh, comping method system where I break the, the piano down into four different areas, you can use any of those voicings. I mean, I could comp up here in the top end. I could go... Right, maybe jump back down. It doesn't matter. You could use some drop twos if you want. Right? That's not really what this particular lesson is about. It's not here to teach you specific fills. Again, I'm trying to teach you how to fish. I don't want to just give you the fish. So if, if I were to teach you specific fills, right, that would essentially be giving you the fish. I'm not trying to say I'm not doing that, but I'm trying to make this accessible for everybody, no matter what skill level you're at. So if you know your drop twos, you can absolutely add those in. Here's a nice drop two of just a rootless voicing. I'm just going down in inversions. I kind of switched up to the uh, 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 actual just uh, second inversion drop two, but if I did, I could have gone some back to my rootless voicing here. It doesn't matter. And again, if you want to comp some octaves up here with left hand voicings, totally cool. So that's comping. You can do that in a number of different ways. It doesn't have to be difficult, whatever you want. Number two, let's talk about reharms for a sec, okay? So reharms are awesome. These involve a lot of passing chords, and I am going to be teaching you some things you can do here because there's a lot, and you have to understand your reharm. So there's a great passing movement I love to use on major seven chords, and it's just two different types of walk-ups. So I'm going to go... So all I'm doing here, I'm playing the melody, then I'm playing 
C major 7, or I played like a C major triad there, I believe. You can use either. C major 7, D minor 7. You can see the chord symbols down there in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen there, above the keyboard. E flat minor, E minor 7. So this is more or less a diatonic walk-up. If I take the E flat out, I'm just going up and down diatonically. This is a fantastic fill to just keep the reflection of the C major harmony. When you get to E minor 7, it's a really close harmony to the C major 7, so it actually works really well. So here's what it sounds like. One, two, three. You can come back down. Sorry, I didn't time that first one right. I was, I was actually going to go back down, but I was like, oh, wait, I didn't teach him that yet. <laughs> Let's try it again. I'm just going to go up. Okay, one, two, three. Right? So that's the most simple version. I'm just kind of going up, right? I'm just going, I'm replaying the C major 7. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. Now I'm going to teach you about some reharms you can do in this next measure here, but let's continue on with the C major 7. So I could add the. Okay, so all I'm doing is adding an E flat minor 7 chord, which leads into the E minor 7. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. And rhythmically, I, I'm actually just messing around with this. I don't have a set rhythm because I will fit them in however I want. So I could go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. I could do that rhythm. I could do the one I just did. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. Right? It's really up to you. As long as you fit it in, the allotted time you have where that melody note is holding, it doesn't matter. I would, I would mess around with the rhythms. Again, I don't have a set one. Those are two great ones you can use. Um, again, one and two and, or excuse me, three and four and. That's a great one as well, or the slower version, right? I'm going to show you a different option here that I really love that I used first, actually, where it was not a C major seven. It was more of a C major triad uh, with omitting the fifth. So I just have one, three, one. And this is really nice. I actually like this one a lot. I, I tend to use this a little bit more because this, this top C kind of stays the same as like a guide tone in your ear where it stays like as a melody note, which is really nice. So it's like a consistent, even though the other harmonies are moving. So I'm going to go C major, D minor seven, E flat diminished ish, or you can call this E flat minor six. It doesn't really matter. You can also put a full diminished here if you want to use bigger voicings. And then essentially a C major triad over E. And again, I would just keep these uh, like this. Now you can do this in a number of different ways. I can do this with two notes like I'm showing you right now. So again, C major, D minor seven, E flat minor six. I like to think of it as a diminished. And then C over E. So again, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's a really nice one. You can break it up. have enough time for that in in this particular one so I wouldn't use that there but if you did have two full measures you could totally just break it up by kind of arpeggiating it right because you have to get the melody back in there right so this is really nice love that one you can also use full triads if you want here full chords So that's the same exact harmonic progression, just with full chords. I have a full, essentially, C6 chord here. I've added the 6. D minor 7. E flat diminished. C6, essentially, over the E now, the 3rd. Okay? So those are some really, really nice passing harmonies. And again, this is the most complicated, I would say. The improv one is actually the least complicated. Um, but it does take more dexterity. And obviously, depending upon your skill level, you're going to be able to do different things. Over the C minor to F7, the tritone, and any sort of like dominant seven reharms really coming into play. So here from the C minor seven, I love to add in the tritone of my C. So I'm going to G flat seven to lead into my F7. So I'm going C minor seven. This is after I hit the melody. C minor seven, G flat tritone. Again, the way the the reason that this works is because the C minor seven leads to an F7. A C dominant seven still leads to an F seven, and all I'm doing is taking a tritone of a C dominant seven, which is a G flat seven, right? 
and it leads me into my F7. So again, you can kind of just think about this as like, if you have a two five, you're gonna play the minor and then you're gonna approach the five from a half step above with a dominant seven chord. So here's what it sounds like, one, two, three. So I went da, da, da. And again, I'm just copying rootless voicings in my right hand, bass notes in my left. That's it. I could do shells. That still sounds good as well. The most simple voicings still sound good as long as you have some good rhythms in there that are punctual, accented, and played with intention and confidence, right? That's really what it takes. So that's a great one. I don't want to get into all the different types of reharms you can do over like a dominant seven or a two five, but reharming is your second choice. It's your second option, right? For the C major seven, I showed you these walkups, which are kind of like reharms because they're not written in the chart, right? But there are more reharms you could do. Um, you could go from the C minor seven into the G flat, right? Into an F seven sus. And then maybe resolve it to different extensions or change the quality of the F7 to an altered. Again, those aren't really reharms because the F7 is still written. You're just changing the colors, but there is no tritone written. So that truly is a reharm. Okay. So number two is reharm option. And like I said, if you can organize this in your head, when you're playing solo piano, your fills are going to become exponentially better immediately because you're going to ask yourself, okay, in this situation, do I want to do a comping fill? Do I want to do a reharm fill? By the way, I don't need to reharm the C minor seven to F seven. I can just think comping, rhythmic comping, right? That works great as well. You don't need to get fancy with it. Like I said, if you have some nice rhythms that are swinging, it's going to sound great. And I just did shells one and two and, or sorry, three and four and. I could do more rhythms, right? Three and four and one and two and three and right? Be sure to make your long rhythms long and your short rhythms short. That'll really greatly define your rhythms and help your rhythmic uh, playing on the piano sound much better. Finally, improv is the last one. And improv is actually, you know, the, I would say, I don't know, it, there's so many range of players like you listening right now, you might be a beast at improv, right? So this might be easy for you. You can just create lines. If you're not Again, this lesson isn't really about learning improv because the skill set you need here is your improv abilities. I'm not here to teach you improv right now. I'm here to teach you about a system that you can choose to create solo piano fills, right? Completely separate skill sets. So if you are a beginner, you can just think about chord tones. That's a very easy way to start. So on the C major seven, I'm just playing around with chord tones in my right hand, like in a higher register to create some fills. That's it. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can kind of create some scalar motion if you want to kind of create some fluidity. One, two, three. Right there, as you saw, like I sped up the melody a little bit because I went a little bit over of my space. So I kind of just sped up the chord note triplets, by the way. That's completely okay. If you run over your space and your fill and you're, you're trying to squeeze the, the melody in, that's okay. It doesn't have to be exact all the time, right? Um, if you're, again, if you're more advanced than that, you can do some, again, just more advanced improv language. This is really where your own improv abilities come into play because I don't know where you're at. I don't want to kind of demonstrate things that are above your ability. I'm just trying to show you the options. So again, if I were kind of improvising at my level or some, somewhere around that, I'll still keep it a little bit tame for now, but one, two, three. It can be anything like improv is just like you're creating an improv thing. Um, octaves are really nice. You could do some, some nice rhythmic octaves up there. It's just like a nice texture up in the top end. One, two, three. Right. That's super simple. And that sounds like you're improvising, which you are, you know, you just, I'm just kind of taking a chord tone or a note from the chord scale. I'm just kind of creating some rhythm with an octave and it sounds fantastic. Okay. So just to review, when you get to a spot in your solo piano performance, whether it's a ballad, slow swing, or fast swing, and you have the opportunity to fill, and you know you have an opportunity because 
the warning flags go off where you see a whole note, even a half note, a dotted half note, a whole note tied to a half note like we have here in Just Friends, the beginning measure to Just Friends. Ask yourself, what fill am I going to use? One, two, or three. Am I going to do a comping fill? Sure, I'm going to do a comping fill. Am I going to do a reharm fill? Am I going to try and get some reharms in there and comp through those? Sure, I'm going to do a reharm fill. Or am I going to do an improv fill? When you have this organizational system of fills in your head, trust me, when you get to those spots, you're not going to feel like a deer in headlights anymore. I promise you. Okay? Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll talk to you soon. Well, if you enjoyed that video lesson, definitely go ahead and subscribe to the Jazz Piano School YouTube channel because we release a new lesson video just like the one you saw every single week. And we have other content educational series called Tips, Tricks, and Transcriptions that we release every single week as well. And don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of the other amazing free education available there. And if you're looking to take some next steps on your jazz piano journey, we do have a membership available, many, many courses, and even live teaching programs that allow you to work with myself and my staff of Jazz Piano School educators. My name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. Thank you so much for watching and happy practicing.